Yo, yo, welcome to Trippy Commentaries. We have made it to week 14 of the fantasy football season. Hopefully you guys are ready for a playoff run. I'm RJ joining up with FPS Kyle. Yo, what's going on? K-Mac, there's been something I've been wanting to talk about, and that's actually next season. I want to break down the top five players that we think will go in next year's draft as far as right now is concerned. So we'll break that down, but first, I think we have to talk about Ryan Fitzpatrick. He had a six-touchdown game. It's kind of funny. That seems to be the magic number because a lot of these quarterbacks are putting up six-touchdown games. He's joined the club. Not sure if I expected him to be one of them. Not at all. What do you think? He's going to be on the free agent wire for a lot of people. Um, I, I, you have a lot of quarterbacks that look like they might be getting banged up. He might be a pretty good insurance policy. Yeah, he could be. I mean, uh, he's got a very favorable matchup next week with Jacksonville. Um, you know, so if if you have a quarterback that you're not so sure about, it's kind of been you know failing for you, you know, here recently. A guy like Tannehill, so maybe one of you guys rolled with him this year, um, and you're looking for somebody that can obviously put up points. Ryan Fitzpatrick's a great guy to pick up and possibly start for you this week to get a victory. Um, his receiving core is great. He's got you know when Aaron Foster's in there, man, the whole offense just runs. Uh, probably one of the better offenses in the league with Aaron Foster in there. So uh, definitely this guy is going to be starting. He's got the ability to do it as, he, as we showed us last week. And, um, yeah, I would definitely roll with him. Yeah, we've been an advocate for Fitzpatrick all season long. Yeah, I was excited to see Ryan Mallett. I wanted to see what he could do. That didn't last too long. But uh, Fitzpatrick's back in there. That is good for the offense. And uh, hopefully Aaron Foster gets back. And then you know everything's going to run even better of course, the defense is going strong with J.J. Watt. That's all they need over on that side. He's been making plays. On both sides. We know <laughs> Fitzpatrick is not going to get nearly six uh, touchdowns. I mean, if he can get three next week, that'll be great. Yeah. I think we can uh, definitely depend on him for at least 14 fantasy points and up. So that's pretty good if you don't have an elite quarterback. Really, if you're heading into the playoffs, you're going to want to have one of those upper echelon guys if you want a chance. Because yeah. those guys are putting up 30 points right now. Aaron Rodgers, they're completely locked in. Kind of weird to have Peyton Manning have a, an off game, but I think we expect him to bounce back, of course. Uh, now, the number one receiver for Ryan Fitzpatrick there in Houston. Who is that, Kyle? Is that Andre Johnson? Uh, maybe last year, but... Uh... Not, not anymore. It's DeAndre Hopkins, man. He's guy has been doing so good all season long. As a guy that you know, we've talked about, you know, kind of off camera, um, a guy that it's just been so consistent for the team. And really, I mean, last week just looked like a beast. They couldn't stop him. Like over 200 yards receiving, two touchdowns. Um, just a beast of receiver. Obviously, you know, you can't trade anymore, and he's definitely not on yeah. free agency. So if you have him, man, enjoy it, and uh, hopefully he's leading you the playoffs. Yeah, I really like it as far as next year is concerned. We know Houston not going to do anything this year, unfortunately. But next year, they definitely have some uh, parts. Man, tough break with Jadavian Clowney. What a wasted pick. You have that high of a yeah, pick, and you can't get anything out of it. What the hell? Nope. That's terrible. I feel bad for the Houston fans. We're, we're big fans of H-Town for a lot of reasons. Yeah, exactly. So uh, we definitely feel for you guys. Uh, we're big Bucks fans, so... When it comes to teams having some bad luck, we definitely feel you on that. But uh, the one thing they have going for him, Kyle, DeAndre Hopkins. We know Arian Foster. He's one of the best. Who knows how much longer he's going to last. Andre Johnson, wow. Future Hall of Famer. Oh, yeah. Awesome player. Still ridiculously good. Also, of course, who knows how long he's going to last. They have DeAndre Hopkins, who's only going to get better. Mm -hmm. What do you think of this guy moving forward? Of course, if, if you're in the playoffs, you're lucky to have DeAndre Hopkins. I think with Fitzpatrick, he's locked and loaded for a wide receiver, too, with wide receiver upside down the stretch. Plus, they're, they're not going to be getting benched going down the stretch as well. Oh, no so, you know, you kind of worry about that. If you're a team that looks like you're going to make it into the championship, kind of got to worry about that. That's another reason why you might want to just pick Fitzpatrick up just in case because you have one of these quarterbacks, you know, like, uh, I mean, I doubt Green Bay really never does it. So Aaron Rodgers is a lock. He's definitely going to play full game in week 15 um, or, excuse me, week 16 when you have your championship. But uh, some of these other quarterbacks, man, they might get benched um, or just not used as much to try to preserve them for the playoffs. 
So something you definitely want to look at. But yeah, Hopkins going forward, man, he's definitely going to be a big time receiver next year, just like he wide was receiver this year. one, possibly. Possibly wide receiver one. I mean, he's really put up wide receiver one numbers this year. So I mean, I can definitely see that continuing to go. Especially like I said, like you were saying, you know, with Andre Johnson, how long is he going to be able to continue to go for? So I think they're really going to push Hopkins into that lead role uh, and kind of take some of the burden off of uh, Andre Johnson. The good thing with Hopkins is he's been one of the most consistent wide receivers all season long. It's yeah. kind of like Mike Evans, who is coming off a bad game. But even though he wasn't blown up at the beginning of the season, he was still showing consistency. Hopkins, same thing, showing consistency. Then you add those blow-up games, that's yeah. fantasy gold right there. Because we just want those players who are not going to throw donuts out all the time. Like, like Marcus Colston, right? This guy is capable of winning you weeks, but... <laughs> To get to those weeks that he's going to win you, he's going to lose you lose, weeks. Yeah. You want those players like DeAndre Hopkins where even if they don't win you the week, they're going to keep everything steady. And uh, as long as you have another player who's going to blow up, you should be good to go. Yep. Make it to the playoffs, no problem. Definitely. Let's go ahead and break down our top five players. Uh, Kyle, your list is a little bit secret. I'm not even sure if you're 100% sure on the top five. We all know that when it comes down to draft time, it's you got to make decisions on the fly, and sometimes what you think you know, you don't know oh, definitely. heading into the draft. Definitely. But I'm going to try to give you my top five. We'll see what you think, and uh, we'll see what we think, of course, heading into the fantasy playoffs, looking ahead to next season. My number five guy, this is my only wide receiver in the top five, and it's not Calvin Johnson. Mm -hmm. And it's not Antonio Brown, who is our number one wide receiver heading into this week. Yeah. It's a guy who's not too far away from Antonio Brown, Demarius Thomas, and this is with the you know thought that Peyton Manning will be back. I think if Manning wins the Super Bowl, there's a chance he leaves, but I think he'll be back regardless. Demarius Thomas, I think, will be the number one wide receiver heading into next season. He's just a straight-up beast. He looks like a tight a end out there. Yep. He looks like some kind of experiment, like Frankenstein mixed with Michael Irvin out there. Really... Really just fun to watch. I would love to own him next year. And because of his size and the quarterback he's playing with, I think he's the safest guy to go with as the number one wide receiver. What do you think? Uh, I have to agree with you. I mean, in, a, in an offense that's so deep at all these skilled positions, uh, you know, Peyton Manning has so many options. We're still seeing Demarius Thomas. He's right now is the number two leading uh, fantasy receiver in the league. Yeah. To get that done with having all the competition, it kind of throws that argument out the window because that's kind of what everyone says about him. Oh, well, there's so many other weapons there. Well, no, nah, doesn't matter because the guy still <laughs> destroys. Um, I still love Antonio Brown. I'd be happy with either one of these guys. Um, I Tough think to take him in the top five, though. It is it is because I'd probably go a different position. You know me, I kind of hold off on the receivers. But, yeah. uh, I mean, both these guys kill it. And Antonio Brown is so crucial to that Pittsburgh yeah. offense that, you know, that that's why he's going to get the looks, he's going to constantly get targets, and he's constantly going to make plays and score touchdowns. The funny thing is, though, if you stand Demarius Thomas next to Antonio Brown, it's going to look like Arnold Schwarzenegger next to Vern Troyer. Of course, not completely, but you know what I mean. It's it's a huge guy versus Antonio Brown. I mean, this guy is small. He was drafted low, but he plays like he's huge himself. Oh, he's super fast, super athletic. I mean, as a receiver, size doesn't matter. Ask Steve Smith about that. He's made a pretty damn good career being a tiny guy. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just on how you play and in your athletic ability. And Antonio Brown is a very smart receiver too. Knows how to find the open holes and. Ben Roethlisberger is going to throw him the ball, you know, as many times as he can in the game. So, uh, but yeah, I, you know, I, I completely agree with Thomas going in the top five. And of course, Pittsburgh will be represented in this top five. We all know that. Yeah. We'll be getting to that soon. <laughs> uh, number four overall this is probably a surprise to you. I'm going with Jamal Charles. Now, this is probably a potential number one overall guy. He's been around for a while. Of course, even going back to his Texas days, you're a big Texas fan. He was used yeah. a lot back then. He was a workhorse back then. He's a worker, workhorse now. As consistent as it gets, especially this season. He had that injury early on, so you had to survive the first three weeks in the season. But since then, he's been fantastic. I'm just a little bit worried about the injuries. Not so much, because I would still take him in the top five. But uh, I'm just a little bit worried about the injuries. Yeah. And that's why I'm going with him at number four. 
Uh, I mean, definitely deserves to be in the top four. I think I, or the top five here. I have him a little bit higher than that. I think you know he did start off this season with with a little bit of a nagging injury. But once that went away, man, this guy's been killing it. Um, obviously, the Chiefs love to run the ball. They love to throw it to him as well. And he can kind of do everything. Like you said, does not want to ever come off the field, which is a great characteristic for running back for fantasy. Uh, the longer they're on the field, the more chances they have to make plays. So I like this guy. I mean, man, there's just so many really good running backs right now. That exactly. Really, from this point on, you know, any one of these guys you're going to be happy with if you have a top four pick. Um, so if I have the number four pick and Jamal Charles is available, I'm definitely taking him. Yeah, me as well. Number three guy, I mean, this might be controversial to some, is Matt Forte. Slightly over Jamal Charles, Matt Forte has been so good, almost under the radar, not only this season, of course, last season as well. Right now he's the number two running back, only to DeMarco Murray. He's been very healthy, so that certainly helped but at the same time, he's throwing out 20-point games like nothing. The one thing that scares me is that when he plays Detroit, it's like they don't even hand him the ball last week. Only five handoffs. I don't care if it's Detroit. I bet you if you give him enough handoffs, he's going to bust out a couple and help you win the game. Instead, they totally give up. I understand what they're doing. They have big receivers, yeah. and they were still using Forte with the screen game a little bit. Uh, so you have those two games against Detroit that scare you. Other than that, you play Green Bay, Minnesota guys, Forte can beat. I like him a lot heading into next year. The only thing I'm worried about is that he was injury prone earlier in his year or earlier in his career. He's had two super healthy seasons. Yeah. Can so, he have three? I you know, and I don't really look at injury too much when I go into these drafts. So we, we kinda screwed ourselves out before the season on Tamarco Murray because we kept saying, When's he gonna get injured? Well, guess what he hasn't got injured and he's been great all yeah, season long. Still going. So um, but with Forte, the only thing I'm worried about is I think Tressman's probably going to get fired in the off season. And I think Tressman has found a re he is he's really helped Forte really become a, a dominant running back in this league just because he's going to throw him the ball a lot. They run a lot of creative screen passes to him, and that's you know, I mean he's I mean, right now he's got more receiving yards this year than he did all of last season. So yeah. he's been killing it in the passing game on an offense that really has been struggling with Cutler. Cutler has kind of used him as a safety blanket all season long. So if that continues, I mean, like I said, I'm sure it's going to continue. If you're a new coach coming in, if it's not Tressman or offense coordinator, how do you not use a guy? I mean, he's he's got every aspect that you need as a running back. He runs hard. He's got great vision, really good hands. Uh, when he gets in the open field, that's when he makes his magic happen. And I mean, he, he's definitely the fitting of this. I think I have Jamal Charles over him, but I definitely had number I had Forte at my number four spot, um, just because I, I think Jamal Charles just has a little more upside. Uh, when he's completely healthy. Yeah, one thing you always preach is uh, it's always safe to get running backs who get a lot of receiving yards, and Matt Forte's yeah. really become the number one guy as I far as that's concerned. For it, yep. uh, number two, DeMarco Murray. He's on pace for possibly 2,000 yards this year. That would be unbelievable. I never would have guessed he could do it, but his offensive line is so good. That's why he's getting it done. You add his bowling ball style with a great offensive line. He's getting it done big time. Unfortunately, I don't have, have him at number one. There's a guy missing from the list that I'm sure might not be everybody's number one. We'll get to him in a second. But DeMarco Murray, number two, that's not too bad. Once again, still a little bit worried about the injuries. It's hard because he looks so great this year. He looks like he, you know, he's got blood on his jersey all the time. He looks like the Terminator. Looks like he ain't gonna get injured at all. He looks like one of the old school running backs, man. Just running people over, stiff arming people. He got does. showing that burst. Uh, really, just an amazing season. Obviously, record setting reason, uh, season so far for Demarco Murray. Um, just been a beast. Um, actually, a guy you're seeing on the screen here, Lashawn McCoy. I mean. This is another guy that's we we don't even have him in our top five right now, no. and uh, he's not going number one. I'll spoil alert. I already know RJ's not going him as number one. It, no. Just another guy that's there's so many good running backs in the league, and it's, it's good to see him kind of coming back and 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 being that you know Demarco Murray being that guy for the Cowboys this year and really putting the team on his shoulders with that awesome awesome offensive line. I see it continuing next year. I'm really not worried about injuries with him. Uh, I actually had this guy as my number one, uh, but the guy that you have picked for your number one, I like him a lot as well. Be tough to pick between these two guys. Yeah, of course, my number one is Le'Veon Bell. Yeah. We'll talk about him in a second, but I really like DeMarco Murray just because he's at number two. I mean, that's that's nothing against him. It's just because I'm so high on Le'Veon. 
Um, to Marco Murray, you got to go with him next year. He's proven himself. It'll be yeah. pretty cool to see how many yards he can end up with here, how many rushing yards, not even taking into account the receiving yards because he's been great in the passing game, which has really Definitely. surprised me as well. I know we've always known he's been a pretty good receiver, but they've really taken it up a notch in that aspect as well. Still hasn't had a receiving touchdown, so that's got to be coming soon. That's true. That's a good point, K-Mac. And we all know, as I said from the start about DeMarco Murray, that offensive line is not going anywhere. Money pick by Dallas with Zach Martin. Oh, He's man. playing great. Yeah, and uh, that's going to anchor that whole running game there in Dallas. The good thing about that offensive line is it should make it to where you can handcuff DeMarco Murray. Unfortunately, I don't have him in any leagues this year. But if I did, I would, I would definitely be trying to hawk Joseph Randall or Lance Dunbar. I know it's hard to tell right now, but I would definitely try to figure it out because if there was a situation where one of those guys got in, I think their offensive line is so good that Joseph Randall would probably do pretty well. Yeah. Hopefully that doesn't happen. We shouldn't even talk about that. DeMarco Murray is a stud. Uh, number one guy, Le'Veon Bell. He's got the receiving game going as well as the running game. Just a really productive team there, Pittsburgh Steelers. He doesn't have the offensive line that DeMarco Murray has, but Le'Veon just gets it done. He's consistent as well. And uh, the blow-up games that he's been showing off this year, I think they're going to stick around, and that's what makes him by far the number one guy because when you have those consistent receiving yards coming in with the running game as well, it just seems like he's unstoppable. Yeah, I agree. Um, Le'Veon Bell, almost identical running back to Matt Forte. Uh, both these guys with over 600 yards uh, receiving. Bell has been a little more effective on the run game and in the run game. And I think that's because Pittsburgh has been so successful with their passing game. A lot of defenses fear it, and it's allowed Le'Veon Bell to get a lot of space. Uh, they do a lot of draw plays to him, which he likes to break off. But just watching this guy run the ball, man, he's he's so patient. He's one of the more patient runners in the league. You see him, uh, they, they, run, they do a lot of the zone plays where – they hand it off to him, and he's got to kind of find the hole. And a lot of running backs, they just fly in the hole. They just fly where they think the hole's at, and they try to break through it. Well, he is so patient, just waits, waits, and he's got that quick burst, man. When this guy gets rolling, it's, he is easily going to get you 100 yards to 200 total yards with the receiving yards a game. It's very possible for him to do that almost every week. And uh, definitely a guy that, hey, he's, he's a guy that you might want to roll with next year because... A lot of people, he might not get drafted number one overall next year. So you might, if you're in that two or three spot, be able to pick up potentially the number one running back for next season. That's true. He's definitely going to be obtainable if you guys have a high spot. And uh, looking at his carries, that's probably the only thing to be worried about. I mean, he had 21 carries last week, 33 the week He's before. Before that, they weren't really feeding him too much. I mean, 11-10. He had a 24 before that, 12. He was kind of getting Vulture a little bit by Blunt, too. I mean, his rushing touchdowns are a little bit down this year. He's only got three. He's got two receiving touchdowns. Um, but, I mean, that's something that – that's that's kind of fluky sometimes. You know, mm -hmm. how many times has he been tackled on the one-yard line this season? That easily could have been touchdowns. So, no doubt. You know, that, I wouldn't look too much into that. The fact is, the guy's already got over 1,000 yards – a uh, thousand yards rushing and over 600 yards receiving. That is amazing. It really is. And he's my number one guy, at least so far, heading into next year. You already mentioned LaShawn McCoy. He's a guy that I think can get a lot of momentum and bust this list because I had him lower this year because of that toe injury. And it yeah. almost like it proved out he is coming around this year. As long as he finishes out the rest of the year strong, I would feel comfortable. It would be a money pick falling out of the top five, that's for sure. Yeah, now one thing I want to say here is that I know a lot of people are going to say, well, why don't you have a quarterback in there? I'd take Peyton Manning in the top five and all that stuff. The way I look at it, and you can look at the numbers, you can look at fantasy points right now, there's probably about a good six to seven quarterbacks that are all scoring uh, more points than any other player, uh, any other position in the league. These quarterbacks, they score a lot of points. And yes, Peyton Manning is going to score you a ton of points. Aaron Rodgers is going to score you a ton of points. A guy like Ben Roethlisberger is going to score you a lot of points, and you're going to want to have that. But I always feel you can wait on that. Like I said, you can get a Russell Wilson who is like number seven right now in total fantasy points. I got him so late in the draft. You know, use those other picks up to get these skilled position guys, your running backs, your receivers, your beast tight ends, and get one of these other quarterbacks later in the draft because they're all going to score a lot of points. And there's not really a whole lot of separation between the best and, you know, some guy that you got in the fourth round. 
Yeah, that's true. That's a good point. Obviously, we just saw Tony Romo on the screen. He's kind of surprised some people. Yeah. We didn't mention C.J. Anderson. He's been getting it done. Is he capable of being a first-round pick next year? He's going to have competition in that backfield. We'll see if Ball can get that's back. Problem, I really man. don't think Ball's going to be too big of a deal. He hasn't showed anything at all. Ronnie Hillman as well. So it kind Anderson of just like, looked the best to me yeah, so far. I thought Hillman, I thought Hillman looked authority. good, but I, yeah, C.J. Anderson, God. Yeah, he's yeah, been freaking diamond in the rough, man. No doubt. And the one guy we have not mentioned, Adrian Peterson. A lot of people picked him number one last year. He will he's be certainly going to be fresh. He will be back. We'll see who he plays for. Thank you guys for joining us. Make sure to stay tuned here. Trippy commentaries. We'll cover all aspects of fantasy football for you. Not only this year, of course, but heading into next season. So please subscribe if you're new. Drop your comment if you have any questions or you need any help with your fantasy team at all. We always have your back here at the channel. Of course, we'll see you next week. Good luck this weekend. Stay trippy. Peace out.